So I saw this t- this headline and it was like new in numbers on Twitter or whatever the fuck. And it said this. Um, unfortunately, it's a Kotaku article. I'm going to try and find something a little bit better. I have a package waiting for me. My mail was delivered. Uh, Twitch star Amaranth wants her AI chatbot to put trolls in their place. What an insane article headline. Let me try and find a better article. I hate Kotaku. What happened to Kotaku? I feel like Kotaku used to be okay. And it's just gotten terrible. Was it? It got too big? I don't know. All right. Amaranth launches AI chatbot that lets fans go on dates with her. A new parasocial relationship just dropped. I like the title of this one. I'm not a huge Polygon fan, Polygon fan either, but whatever. I prefer Polygon to Kotaku, I guess, even if they're probably owned by the fucking same subsidiary or whatever the fuck. But it says, the movie Her came out nearly... Th- this is an insane introduction to this. That is crazy to say that when it's nothing like Her. Yet the technology featured in it, namely artificial intelligence girlfriend that you can access from, from your phone, feels like on the cusp of being realized. On May 19th, high-profile Twitch star and OnlyFans creator Caitlin... This is her last name? Sira Gusa? I did not know that. Known as Amaranth, released an AI companion bot that fans can interact with. Pa- powered by AI company Forever Voices, the chatbot appears to allow fans to send vocal recordings receive a f- response like that thanks to artificial intelligence technology that sounds like Amaranth is responding via voice note. With AI Amaranth, fans will have instant voice responses to any burning questions they may have. A press release about AI Amaranth shared with Dexterdo said, whether it's a fleeting curiosity or a profound desire, Amaranth's AI counterpart will be right there to provide assistance. Okay, let's talk about two things. Sierra Gussie. Oh, wait. Before we do that, I want to say say this. In the press release obtained by Dexterdo, Amaranth said, I thrive on taking... uh, risks and pushing boundaries above all i prioritize being there for my incredible audience ai amaranth is designed to satisfy the needs of every fan ensuring an unforgettable and all-encompassing experience polygon has reached out to amaranth and will update this article if she responds okay oh is this the one wait is this video about her it all started with karen marjorie was the one that really caught my attention she now such a powerful technology that we then applied it to influencers that have these large followings of fans uh, that would love to meet and talk to and interact uh, with these people. And so with our latest launch today with Amaranth, uh, one of the top Twitch streamers in the world, um, you know, we're sort of further defining this new era of AI to human interaction where you can interact with an AI copy of uh, the person you admire most. How do you, in fact, some of the technology behind this, John, just ultimately, how are you producing these voices? What sets you apart from others? So what we've done here is we've taken a baseline large language model and we've applied these proprietary... Yeah, where the fuck is he? I'm very confused at the location behind him. Three ...layers on top of that that we built, such as a personality engine that develops these, you know, immerse deep personalities of AIs, uh, in this case, Amaranth or Karen that we launched last week, uh, where they they exhibit feelings, you know, they can connect with you on a deep level. They can- I fucking hate CEOs. I just despise CEOs. Everything that they say is just the worst. It's just the worst. That was like the worst sentence you could put together. Motherfucker, you literally look AI generated, man. Come on. Okay, sorry. Going in your insights so that's what our personality engine does and then we also have our voice engine which is really powerful so that allows us to take uh really just about 10 minutes let's say of audio of an influencer that we sign a deal with where we're getting their rights to their likeness and voice and actually replicate their voice in ai form to democratize access to uh their fan base trying to interact with them John, you share an emotive story as to why you first started this, wanting to continue a relationship in an AI form with your late father. A similar story for the founder of Replica and her, her lost friend. That is friend so a- dystopian. You want to continue your relationship with your dead father, so now you're going to talk to an AI of them? Oh, my Lord, dude, no. 
car crash. Now, a lot of Replica's viewpoint is this is about mental health as well, as having companionship. But I'm interested in the safeguards that you put in place, because ultimately, if you're, as you say, blurring the lines between reality and virtual interaction, there must be some super fans who, who get a bit confused here. Absolutely. So what we've done is, as the conversations with our AIs develop, if you're speaking to, you know, our Karen AI, or today now with Amaranth uh, from Twitch, what we've done is we've implemented procedures. My favorite thing is like these people who know nothing about Twitch when they pronounce Amaranth's name, they all, they're always like Amaranth. Like the way they say it is always so bad. As the conversations with our AIs develop, if you're speaking to, you know, our Karen AI or today now with Amaranth uh, from Amaranth. Twitch, <laughs> what we've done is we- They like throw an I in there for some reason. We've implemented procedures that have automatic detection of a variety of situations from mental health situations uh, to overuse. And so the AI will actually, in real time, either slow the conversation down if a conversation is going too long or if it appears someone might be getting, let's say, addicted. And then what we've also done is built a mental health engine uh, to detect various states of depression, anxiety, um, and soon to be even cases of bipolar disorder. Yo, the AI is going to fucking diagnose me. <laughs> me when the AI di diagnoses me with depression and anxiety. <laughs> okay. Among users so that we can in real time connect them with human therapists uh, and human ran emergency hotlines if it's ever needed. I totally can understand the building of the business for Amaranth, for example, on OnlyFans already just supplementing how much she can go out and build and profit from this. But who else are you speaking to and how many actually celebrities are worried about their voices being generated without their rights involved? How are people trying to get ahead of the curve with it? Well, you know, before this whole story went viral last week of us at Forever Voices AI turning, you know, the first influencer into an AI girlfriend, we've seen hundreds of other influencers and celebrities reach out. AI will slow conversation down if someone gets addicted. What the fuck does that mean? Uh, in a matter okay, so I want to just let this guy f finish talking. To be clear, this guy is like a fucking uh, big wig. I don't like big wigs. I M O. They're not for me. But really quick, um, ghosted by an AI. <laughs> Can you imagine? You're talking to the AI and you're like, "Babe, baby, please, where are you, where did you go, baby? I missed you all day." And the AI is like, "I think you're getting too attached." I think it's time that we need to call it off. It's like, no, no, ghosted by my friends, ghosted by my family, ghosted by my romantic partners, and now ghosted by AI. When will it stop? Even AI recognizes the rizlessness. Can you imagine? Can you fucking imagine? Your results have returned. You are diagnosed with general anxiety disorder. Was this information helpful? Please write below. <laughs> oh my god. He went from wanting to help people so they can speak to dead loved ones to some parasocial shit within like a minute? Yeah. Oh god. Jesus fucking Christ. Okay, okay. Diagnosed with no riz. Uh, no bitches. Yeah, the bot is like, mm, you are mm, too clingy. Engaging in ghosting protocol. Of, you know, the first 48 hours. And so there's been a bit of a transformation over this last, you know, seven to 10 days since, since this whole story went around the world that has opened up people's minds to the idea of replicating themselves in AI form, not only as a means of adding additional revenue uh, to your, you know, your content creator business, but as a way, again, of interacting with fans in this entirely new way via you know, this immersive two-way audio experience and even soon to- I feel like this guy watches train wrecks. ...be video as well. Your original business, did you have rights to those celebrities when you were building those voices? Uh, so what we started with with Forever Voices was really uh, a series- Maybe that's out of pocket, but like the way he says, like the way that he's talking about certain things, I'm like, I don't know, man. Some demos that you know, <laughs> know leverage man. the technology to show the world what is possible. 
And so what we've done is we've simply donated any proceeds. People are going to be making Waluigi JOI bots before long. Oh, wow. From, let's say, an Someone needs to let my friend Jordan Pearson uh, know about this. Uh, he can recreate his grandmother. You know what we need to make? You know what we need to make, chat? We need to make AIs. We need to make an AI mom for all of the incels on the internet. Because I feel like inceldom on the internet, it starts from mommy issues and it starts from like motherless behavior. We need to give these, these dudes online like moms. And they're like, I've always loved you, son. You have always been my favorite. I love when you spend time with me. And they're like, oh my God, my mom loves me. <laughs> I don't hate women anymore. <laughs> like, I feel like that would work, man. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. Yeah. I'm going to be real with you guys, chat. be honest. I think it'll work. A demo of what's You say, are a special boy. Who's my favorite special boy? A uh, Grimes before, <laughs> you know, we get a deal done with her to charity. Uh, but the core of our business is uh, through these signed license deals with influencers and celebrities, uh, such as the one you know we're announcing today with Amron. Okay, so Grimes, there's a hint there that is discussions. What about your own discussions? What about your own fundraising? Because I'm sure there might have been a few VCs picking up the phone to you as well as celebrities. Yeah, it's been a whirlwind of a week. I mean, we've been in touch with every, everyone from you know index to benchmark and so on. And um, you know, we are in a position now where we're you know really turning this into a hyper. The Grimes AI, I feel like she would say slurs. I don't have a reason to say that. I just, I just kind of feel that way. I don't know what, I don't know which slurs, but I just kind of feel like she would. Scalable business where we see a future in the very near future. And I'm talking next two years where every significant influencer that is, you know, looking to make a living off of content or, you know, let's say YouTube, Twitch, Instagram, what have you, will raise their hand up and say, I want to create an AI version of myself. Um, we see every influencer having these uh, in the next one to two years. You unlock a slur, or sorry, you get a slur unlock every 100 companionship points. Yeah. Okay, let's talk about a couple of things with regard to this AI. Right. The Grimm's AI would say slurs due to a workaround personally implemented by Elon Musk as part of a $10 billion deal. Okay, let's talk about a couple things, shall we? Let's talk about this AI stuff for just two seconds. A, okay, I feel like a lot of the conversation around Amaranth and like this chatbot is like the well has been so fucking poisoned. Okay, I feel like so much of the conversation is just so fucked. Like, some people are talking about parasocial stuff. Some people are talking about, like, um, how far the AI will go. Some people are talking about AI girlfriend. A lot of different things about a lot of different people. Many such cases of many such people saying many such things. I want to talk about one very specific thing. I think it's fine. I think as long as you are aware that you are talking to an AI, which, let's be real, right now, AI is, it's very obvious that you're talking to AI. I think as long as you know that you're talking to an AI, you're not being so sold like a false product. I think that that's fine. I mean, like, if you have an issue with that, your issue is with, like, capitalism, prioritizing profit before, like, human enjoyment, life, and happiness. Okay? Like, that is, that is, like, that's a different problem. That is a completely different problem, right? It's not, as long as it's not false advertising and it's experimental. Yeah. It's like, yeah. You know what I mean? capitalism yeah yeah hassan bot would just call you a dumbass and then block you <laughs> you're so that's so true dude that's so true you say like i think you're not great at valorant just instantly you can no longer speak to this ai anymore <laughs> okay i feel like a lot of people keep framing it as like amaranth will be your girlfriend this is the ai girlfriend experience and it's like when did we say that it would be a girlfriend experience? This is just like an AI that will respond to you and sounds like Amaranth voice notes. That's it. You know what I mean? 
It's just a chatbot. Yeah, there is already AIs that can do this now. You know, the CEO did at one point. Yeah. And it's just like, I just, I, you know, I feel like so much of this narrative relies on people's attitude towards sex work. Oh, 100 percent. One million percent. One million, one million percent. Girlfriend is when women respond. Exactly. And we'll find some weird shit. Uh, sometimes it can be funny to see. I mean, yeah, I think so. Um, it was already a company that marketed in the AI girlfriend experience and they haven't ended up having a lot of issues. Yeah, of course they did. Right. Uh, I think if like I would take a serious issue with an AI that was that was not being OK. Sorry, sorry. Let me start over that sentence. I would take serious issue if a content creator like Amaranth made an AI chatbot that pretended to be your girlfriend and didn't tell you that it was an AI. That, I think, feels very unethical because you're lying to people and you're selling them an experience that's completely bullshit, completely fake. If you fall in love with the AI girlfriend, dude, like there are so many other problems happening. There are so many other things that are going wrong in society as a whole that you are falling in love with the AI girlfriend experience and you know it's an AI. You know what I mean? Um, I also think like, this is my opinion, right? This is just, I don't know if you guys are allowed to disagree or whatever. I think all of this stems, by the way, chat, like literally all of this stems from one very specific thing. Okay. I think this literally stems from removing third places. You guys know the really good second thought video. No, not second thought video. Um, Not just bikes video on uh, third places. Actually, we can do like a little poll in chat one sec. Because I just recognize that like there are some, there's probably a lot of people who haven't seen the video. It's an amazing video. It's probably, 